more generous permissions on their share permissions. So let's go ahead and click on advanced sharing. And again, we'll click on permissions. Now the first thing an administrator would do when they provide access to a folder on the network is they want to remove the everyone permission. Or I'm sorry, the everyone group. So we're going to go ahead and remove the everyone group. Now we're going to click on add to add different users and groups that we want to have access to this folder. Now if you remember, we had two user accounts on the domain. One of them was white hat and one of them was black hat. Now we want to set up some permissions for those two accounts to get into our data folder. So how do we do that? Now if you remember right, white hat was part of the achievers group. Now these are domain user accounts and domain groups. So we want to go search for the achievers group and give the achievers group full access. So again, by clicking on the add button here, we bring up our select users, groups, and other principles window. And then we make sure we have the right location, because remember white hat is going to be part of DR land and so is black hat. The achievers group is part of the DR land domain. We could click on objects and we could make sure we could uncheck security principles. We could add computers if we wanted to give them permissions. But users and groups is what we're going to be adding, so we're going to go ahead and leave it there. And then again, we could go back to locations and we could select users and groups from our local computer, but we want to select users and groups from the domain. And again, if you were setting this up in the lab, this would be VWP Tech. So what I want to do is go search for the Achievers group on the DRLAN domain. So I'll type in Achievers, click on Check Name, it found the Achievers group, I click OK. So the Achievers group now has been added to the Share Permissions, and we're going to give the Achievers group full control. We'll click Apply and OK. Now let's just say for our example that we wanted to give the Achievers group full control of this folder, but we did not want them to be able to change permissions to give other users and groups permissions. So we went ahead and we gave the Achievers group full control on the Share Permissions tab. And we click on Apply and OK. And now Achievers has full permissions on the Share tab or the Share Permission. Now it's always prudent to give administrators full control also of any folders that you might be sharing in the network. So we're going to go back and we're going to click on permissions and let's go ahead and add the administrators, the domain administrators group on the DRLAN domain. We'll check domain, it found the domain admins, we'll click OK. Now the domain admins group has been added. We're going to give the domain admins full control. And let's go ahead and give local administrators complete control on this, um, this shared folder. We'll click on Add. And now to pick local users or groups, we have to click Locations. And let's click the Win7 computer itself. Click OK. And then we're going to type in Administrators. Click Check Name and it found the administrators group on the Win7 computer. Again, this is a local group. We're going to click full. So it's always prudent to give the groups that you want to have access their permissions and then make sure your local administrators and your domain administrators have full access because they're the ones that are going to be doing the administration on the folder and on your network. So we're going to click apply and OK. Apply and OK. And that looks pretty good for our shared permissions for the achievers group. Now remember, we need to set up both tabs. We need to set up sharing permissions and our NTFS permissions. Now one of the things about NTFS permissions is that NTFS permissions are inherited from the folders above or from the volumes and drives above where the shared folder is located. So our data folder here, if you look, our data folder is actually inheriting permissions from our C drive. These NTF permissions are the same permissions that our C drive has. 
So what we have to do is stop sharing on this data folder because we don't want them to inherit permissions from the C. We want to refine and set up our own NTFS permissions on this data folder. So the way to stop inheritance is to click on Advance, then to click on Change Permissions, and uncheck Include Inherited Permissions. Now what the security window is prompting us for is to either save the permissions that are currently installed on that folder or we can remove all the permissions. I normally click on Add which saves the permissions that are on that folder right now. And then I'll click on Apply and OK and OK. And you can see now that it has saved the permissions that are currently that were currently inherited from the C drive. But now because we've uninherited those permissions, we're able to remove the groups that we don't want. Now the authenticated user group apply to all local users and all domain users. So we're going to go ahead and remove that group. Now the way we remove the group is we have to click edit here. So we have the authenticated groups selected. We'll click on move. Now the authenticated users group has been removed. System is a system group that computers connecting to the to um, our Win7 computer use. There are system settings and system configurations. So normally you're going to want to leave the system group connected. Again, here is our local administrators group. And again, we probably want to leave the local administrators to be able to get to this folder. Now here's the local users group. And normally I, you're going to want to remove the local users so they cannot get to this folder. So I'll go ahead and remove that. Now if you remember right, we wanted to give the white hat user account on the domain full permissions on this shared folder, but we did not want them to be able to change permissions and give other users permissions. So let's go ahead and add the achievers group, which the white hat user account is part of again. So I'm going to click on add. Again, we're going to be looking for a group. We're going to be looking for it on the DRLAN domain, and I'm going to type achievers. We'll check name, click on apply, and now the achievers group has been added. Now the way to give the achievers group full permissions but not allow them to change permissions is to give them the modify permissions. So the achievers group now gets all of the NTFS permissions except for full control. They can modify, they can execute, they can list, they can read, they can write. So the achievers get all of the permissions except they can no longer change permissions on our data folder. I'll click on apply and OK. And so now we've assigned the achievers group and remember the white hat domain user account is part of the achievers group and the achievers group and white hat now have full permissions under share and modified permissions under our NTFS. Now there's a couple of terms that you're going to have to be aware of as you're going through your studies. One of them is ACL or access control list. This window right here is the access control list or ACL. The access control list lists all of the users and the groups and their permissions. Now the other term that goes along with ACL is going to be ACE, access control entry. So access control entry is each one of the permissions that's assigned to a specific user. For instance, the users group has the full modify read, list, read, and write permissions. Each one of these is considered an access control entry. The achievers group has modify, read, list, read, and write. Again, each one of these is an ACE or an access control entry. And this entire window is considered an ACL or an access control list. Now let's go back to the domain controller on the DR LAN and take a look at the white hat account and the black hat account and the two groups that they're a part of, just as a refresher. Okay, so here I've logged in to the domain controller on the DR LAN. Now remember, all of the domain user accounts and domain groups are set up on the domain controller on the LAN. So I'm going to go ahead and I've logged into the domain controller and let's open up Active Directory Users and Computers 
and take a look at the different domain accounts again and the domain groups. Now, this console, Active Directory Users and Computers, again, is very familiar to us. It looks very similar to the local users and groups on our Win7 computer. If we go down here to the users container, we can see again our domain user accounts. We have the admin user, the administrator, Billy, Black Hat user accounts. These are domain user accounts. We have Sam. That's the account that I'm using to log into that Win7 computer. White Hat. Okay, these are all user accounts again on the domain. Let's look at some of the groups. Here's a group. You can tell by the little double person icon here that this is a group. Here's our Achievers group. If I open up the Achievers group, look at Members, we can see that White Hat is a member of the Achievers group. We have another group down here called Rowdy. Let's go ahead and take a look at that group. Open up Rowdy. Look at the members. You can see that Black Hat, the user count Black Hat, is in the Rowdy group. Now let's go back to the Win 7 computer and continue to configure some permissions. Okay, so we have the Achievers group with the Modify Permissions and the NTFS Permissions. Under our Share Permissions, Advanced Permissions, we know we have the Achievers group that have full permissions. So now let's do, let's say that we wanted to give Black Hat some permissions. Now say we wanted Black Hat to be able to open and read files and maybe change those files. We want to make sure that Black Hat cannot delete any files. How do we do that? Again, we're going to want to start, I'll go ahead and cancel this, we always want to start with our Share Permissions tab. Click on Advanced, click on Permissions. If you remember right, Black Hat is part of the Rowdy group. Now why do we always assign groups? This is another very important concept. One of the reasons why IT administrators use groups is people get employed by your company and people get terminated from the company, these user accounts continually change. Now, if these user accounts were not part of a particular group, you would constantly have to be going in here and adding different user accounts as people left the company and then where new hires came into the company. They'd constantly, the administrator would be constantly going in and out of here, adding different user accounts. But by using groups, when the administrator sets up a new account or terminates an employee, that user account that they set up is automatically added to a group or it can be automatically removed from a group. It makes assigning permissions very easy. So administrators will always try to use groups when they set up permissions. But now can they use user accounts? Absolutely. We can use individual user accounts if we want to. Now, again, we're, you, we're looking at the Black Hat account and we want Black Hat to be able to change and open files, but we do not want him to delete. Now, also remember that Black Hat is part of the Rowdy group. So we're going to go ahead and click on Add. We're going to be looking for a group on the DRLAN domain, and the group is Rowdy. We'll click on Check Name and OK. And now the Rowdy group has been added, and we want to give the Rowdy group change permissions. We'll click on Apply and OK. Apply and OK. And now Black Hat and the Rowdy group is configured with the share permissions. Again, now we'll go to the security tab and configure the NTFS permissions. To add the Rowdy group to NTFS, we'll click on Edit, click on Add. Again, we're looking for groups on the DRLAN domain. We'll click Rowdy, 